always wondered if my biological parents think about me. Today's David's 18th birthday. You want to talk to him? I don't think he'd want to talk to me. There's only one way to find out. God gave you to me and mom as a gift. And you will always be our son. Oh, how did you come across this story? We had just finished Overcomer and Kirk Cameron gave us a call and he said, you've got to watch this short little documentary called I Lived on Parker Avenue. So I pulled it up, watched it and man, did it grab my heart, showed it to Stephen. We began talking to Kirk. We got to talk to the real people that it's about. And, you know, it, the, the story about an 18 year old girl that rolls off the abortion table when she hears a voice say, get up, there's still time. So she places her baby for adoption. It's adopted by a couple that could not have their own children. And then the, they named the baby David. And when David was 18 years old, he gets to cross paths with his biological mother. She thought he would hate her. Hmm. And when he met her, he just wraps her up in a beautiful hug. They both cry together. And he says, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for choosing life, for letting me live, for letting me be adopted. I love my family. And her heart just melts. And we got to see the actual footage of that event that was filmed. And so Stephen and I said, wow, what a beautiful story. And as we prayed about it, we felt led to tell this in a feature film length with Kirk Cameron helping us. Mm -hmm. And so he plays the adoptive father. And we had no idea that preparing to release it this September, it would come right after Roe vs. Wade was being overturned. So God's timing is perfect. So we're going to follow his lead and hope that a lot of people are impacted by the story. Right, because what are, these are one of the issues that they say, you know, oh, you know, there'll be a lot in the foster care and there'll be a, a lot of kids in the adoption. But um, just a wonderful message there that saying, you know, he ha does have life and he's got a great family and, um, you know, it does give hope in those situations. Well, and right now, the church has an amazing opportunity to rise up with clarity and, com and compassion and courage. You know, not only showing compassion for uh, girls that are in unwanted pregnancies who now think, uh, oh, no, I have no options. Well, you've got lots of options and we want you to be able to make a choice after you hold that baby in your arms. Look at it in the eyes before you make this life changing decision. If you don't want to have if you can't raise this child, there are hundreds of thousands of couples who cannot have children that would love to be able to adopt and raise this child. So showing compassion for the uh, the women that are that feel like they're in a crisis, compassion for the unborn that have no voice to speak up for them, and then compassion for these people that want to have children and raise them up. And so this beauty, this movie presents beautifully that whole journey. And it also is a fun journey because you're laughing one minute, you're crying the next minute, you're following teenagers, you're following adults, grandparents, kids, and, uh, and we've, we've got some twists and turns on the way. And then at the end of the film with our Fathom release, it's going to be released in 48 states, 1,400 theaters on September the 9th. Uh, we're able to speak to the audience and speak to those that have had abortions. And they're trying to figure out how to deal with the emotion, the guilt, the frustration, the weight that they're feeling. Sherry Rigby uh, shares at the end of the film, after having gone through an abortion oh. herself, how God brought healing in her life. And how they can have the healing as well that Christ brings into our lives. And so there is so much that I believe that this movie will be able to do to, as a tool to hand a, 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 a couple who doesn't know what to do uh, with a pregnancy, to hand a church member that's trying to consider adoption, uh, to hand a legislator or a business owner that are feeling the heat and the weight in their local communities or at a state legislative meeting as to what is the good, right, true, and just decision to make now at the state level. And so we hope this movie will be wind in the sails and be an instrument of healing and a huge blessing to anybody who sees it. And anyone can go to lifemarkmovie.com mm -hmm. and watch the trailer, see behind the scenes, read about the story, even find resources for ministry there. So we hope that lifemarkmovie.com is a, is a uh, great path for many people saying what's next for us. And you guys have a personal testament with adoption, correct? Yes. My wife and I had four biological children and then the Lord led us to adopt a baby girl and uh, she had a heart defect. 
It was definitely a faith journey. And now we've seen God all over that. He's taught us so much about how your heart can expand in love towards uh, an adopted child just as much as biological children. Uh, she recently came to Christ. I baptized her this past Sunday, actually. Oh. And this week, she's on a little fifth grade mission trip, and she shared her testimony twice already this week in another state. And so she is a beautiful little girl. And uh, God's taught us a lot, even about our spiritual adoption that scripture says in Ephesians 1 takes place when we give our lives to Christ. He's taught us a lot about that through this process of adoption. So it's been incredible. So talk about your role in all of this, because, you know, it's different because you had a different director this time. Uh, How was that experience? And and, uh, talk about your roles. You know, it's important to us to invest in the next generation of filmmakers that want to honor God with their craft. And so we gave up our director and producer roles. So Stephen and I, Still helped to craft the movie, but we're executive producers. And so Kevin Peoples directs this. Aaron Burns and Justin Tolley produced it. But we uh, were able to work as a team the whole way through. Mm -hmm. And we love giving more people experience in making feature films, especially that honor the Lord. So we want to expand that that uh, that platform. We want more people that want to honor God to get on that platform. So we are for investing in more generations. So I will direct maybe every other movie we do, but I love investing in uh, the, the next group coming up. So uh, we, we think the movie turned out well. But you did add some things like Kendrick Brothers wrestling or something. What was it? That you said? <laughs> it was, yeah. Well, it the was, way we've described it is we moved from quarterbacking on the field to coaching on the sidelines. So we're still heavily involved. And there was times when we stepped in and we said, no, don't do that. Do this, you know. So we've been involved in the journey of this movie from beginning to end. And so, uh, but we do like to rejoice over the success of this next generation. And, and these guys are super talented and we're excited about how God's going to use them in the future. And working with Kirk Cameron, that was probably a great experience. You know, he seems like such a positive, positive guy. He's got a great following in terms of the conservative audience. So um, talk more about that. Kirk is a great friend. We've known him since uh, 2005. That's when we met him. And of course, we did Fireproof together. We have since done another Fathom event movie together and been on several television shows together. But this was the second feature film we've done with him and Kirk loves the Lord. He is a, he is a gifted um, actor. And so we really had a blast making another feature film and just hanging out together. So Kirk has adopted four of his six kids and his wife is adopted Chelsea. Yeah. And so this was a, a near and dear topic to his heart. And again, he, so he loved doing it. And again, he introduced the whole story to us in the first place. So it was an honor to be executive producers with him and act in the same film. Uh, so is there anything else you need to tell us on how people can, um, you know, find out more about it or you did give the Lifeway Lifemark um, website, right? Or is there anything mm-hmm. else? Yes, the lifemarkmovie.com, the website, has uh, a place you can just type in your zip code and it will show you what theaters are playing it around you. Uh, This is kind of cutting edge for us because Fathom is releasing the film. They've never done it on a Friday night. They're releasing this film on a Friday night. They've expanded it as well uh, so that it can go further weeks if people are signing up to support the film. Tens of thousands of tickets have already sold. People are pre-buying out blocks of tickets. And so we think this is a great opportunity to support life in your communities at a national level with the message of this film. We're praying that the movie will be translated internationally and be able to impact life and adoption with countries around the world. But there's also resources for people that have either been a part of an abortion or they are interested in supporting adoption. All of that stuff will be follow up with this movie as well. But we would encourage people, please support support the film. Use it in your local community. Community, spread the word about it and then use it, uh, you know, to reach people and inspire ministry within your circumference of influence. She wants to meet. Really? Yeah. This is huge. Hey, what's up, Emily? How's it going? That's Elizabeth. 